pilot asked to do that. He's nasty. Oh, hey, Toy Gang's here. Thinking about opening up Asti. X Wing Pilot Asti. He's been on my shelf for a long time, and I figured I'm bored today. Today is the day I'm going to open up this pilot. Asti. Don't know who he is, but I'm going to give you some tips today of what to do when you're fi with your, fi what, your finger? With your finger? What do you do with your finger when you open it? <laughs> what to do with your figure when you open it. And I know you might be saying, Toy Games, what the hell are you talking about? You open your figure and you, you pose them and that's it. But no, my friend, I have tips to make your toy collecting dreams go wild or to just enjoy the hobby. Um, it's more than just opening a figure or buying a, a figure and, and putting it on the shelf or hanging it up. A lot of things you could do to really flesh out this hobby and, and enjoy it for more than just buying a toy. We're gonna get to that right now after I open Asti. What a name. Hey! Oh! Gains! Oh! Oh! Gains! Not wearing the glasses to look smart. When you hit a certain age, you're gonna need them. That's a pro tip. That has nothing to do with toys though. The first thing for collecting toys, when you open the things, is get the proper tools. I know it sounds stupid, but after you start to un unbox a ton of toys in your life, there's little twisty ties in there and shit that drives you nuts. So have a blade, have some snips, and that'll help your life so much better instead of, you know, digging at this with your fingers. Oof, boom. It's in yet. I'm already in, baby. I'm already in. Right there. Fortunately, the old Black Series figures were just like that. Ah, oh, that noise. Wait. Toy collectors know about the smell, the glue smell that probably gives you cancer and brain damage. <laughs> You pop that out and he's gone. A lot of figures don't have the twisty ties. You guys know what I'm talking about. The little little snippets. A little snip snip. Oh, oh. Done, I'm done. So there you go. He's out. I'm gonna show you what to do with this guy right now, besides just, you know, his 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 limbs are pretty smooth. That's another tip. If you bust out a figure and he's been in the cold, you know, get a blow dryer. Get these joints nice and loose. This guy's actually kind of cool. What the hell was your name? Asti, what a name, Asti. Who came up with that? Aliens, man, freaking alien. So normally you get a figure and you pose them and you plop them on, on your coffee table or if you got a desk or wherever you can, and that's it. That's where this dude is gonna live for the rest of his life, right there in the kitchen counter, but not at Toy Game. I'm gonna show you how to give this guy a life. You want this guy to have a life. You want this Asti to enjoy his life for the rest of your life so you two could be in harmony. It's a big deal, man. Right, Asti? Right? God damn, yeah. So, the best way to appreciate your collection, especially if you're a super fan of one thing like Dragon Ball or Star Wars, Star Wars in this case, get a shelf and get some lighting. You don't have to have your whole apartment or room or office decked out with every single corner shelved, but at least start with one shelf. This is a classic shelf from um, Ikea. This is about 70 bucks. These are getting harder to find, but you can get at any shelf. You can get like the classic bookshelf from like Walmart. That's like 30 bucks. And then you could buy the lights from Amazon, little puck lights and figure out how to do the lighting. It's not that difficult. And once that shelf is lit up, the figures are going to take on a life of their own. They're going to look uh, almost like, like for here, I did these little movie scenes. I got Vader and the troops. I got the Java, uh, Java scene when Luke went to rescue Han. So, for example, fortunately, uh, Asti here doesn't fit any theme with these guys. But if he did, already with that lighting, you could see. Let's move Luke out of the way here. And let's say Asti went and saved Han Solo and talked to Jabba. Already, you have a theme going. You, you have that figure now is, is kind of alive. He's in, he's in a, a scene from a movie. So you just went from a figure you bought randomly and you might have just put near your your computer and now he's in a movie scene. And this lighting, this dramatic lighting, the shelf all brings it to life. Now, you don't have to go with something fancy like this. If you look right to the left here, these are like $10 pieces of wood I got and I threw on the wall. Shelving is the key to appreciating your collection and, and proper lighting. I can't stress it enough. Um, 
all these guys were in a box like six months ago. And I had a few up here and there. And I was getting depressed because I, I was like, I have all these figures and they're not doing anything for me. When they're sitting on a shelf in your closet, what are you really doing? You're really just uh, hoarding figures at that point. Now, I'm fortunate enough to be with somebody that, that lets me take up all this space. I know not a lot of people are in that situation, but just start small. Start with something like this with the Star Wars setup. And if you can, go nuts like that. So rule number one in collecting, get a shelf, get some lighting. And I'm going to show you some examples of what I got going on in my apartment that really flushed out one of my, some of my favorite pieces. I'm going to do that right now. While we're over here, um, this shelf I put here, these like stairs, do you hear my voice here? These, these, so, does it sound like that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> These stairs are actually a spice rack. What are you saying? These stairs or these dares? These stairs. Okay. I got it, right? These freaking stairs. Mm -hmm. If I curse, I could usually say the word I have trouble with. These fucking stairs right here. These fucking guys. They're a spice rack from Target and that helped me get all these figures on there. Um, the, the thing that really um, took my collecting to the next level and made me really have fun and appreciate the hobby of buying toys was customizing and i know not everyone it is a talent it is a skill but you can learn this talent and skill with some practice and i'm going to tell you, you not every figure like this this um space ghost this was a batman uh mcfarlane batman and not everyone's going to have the skill to just make batman in the space ghost um that's a tough one but you could do things as simple as so this bazooka, um, I don't have the, pre uh, he didn't have these straps. These straps were not present, and I don't like the way a backpack, I don't like it when it's floating. So it kind of bugged me, where you see every other figure they've kind of done, like Sergeant Stalker had the straps for his, his little gun harness, right? Or holster on the back. So I'm, I'm like, why doesn't bazooka have it? What I did was, I got an extra Stalker figure, I cut the straps off that one and I gave them straps. That's customizing at its simplest level. So what you did is you gave them strap on. <laughs> strap them on, baby. What are you trying to get funny over there? So I didn't like something about the about the figure. Now I love it. And and that just makes it, like this Cobra Commander. Don't fall there, Bazooka. Don't fall, baby. Cobra Commander. This isn't the head he came with. This is the classic hooded head. You know, we know why we, we, they can't make that. It is what it is. But, but when eBay... Why can't they make it? Uh, 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 okay. uh... I can't see fucking shit out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 3D print that someone did. And I had to paint it, but now I have the Cobra Commander that I want. And if you don't get into customizing you won't reach the full potential of your collection. You, you, I'm telling you, here's another example. This is a gladiator from Mythic Legions. This blood wasn't there. See, I put blood on his feet, blood on the sword. I dirtied him up. He's a gladiator. He's fighting in a freaking ring? No, he's not fighting a ring. Whatever they fight in. An arena, Jesus. Are you not entertained? He, <laughs> he's fighting an arena all day. His feet should be dirtied and bloodied up. I did it. Flush out your collection the way you want. Make them look the way you want. When you learn how to customize, those things will happen. Um, I got another one that's simple. I have this Viking. I went to, uh, not Joanne Fabrics, what's the other place that's closed on Sunday because they love Jesus? Uh, Hobby no. Lobby. Hobby Lobby. They have cloth there. I added this cloth. That was simple. Some, cause, uh, so if you're not good at painting, add cloth to a figure. The fur was actually there as well. So I made him look like a little crazy Viking coming at you. There's so many ways you can customize figures. Um, there's a guy named Ink Drop Customs who actually teaches a little, little more in depth than I do. Cosplay Chris, he's another one that got me started. Uh, and then find toy lines that will let you practice. McFarlane is good because McFarlane figures are like 20 bucks. And there's a lot of detail there. None of this paint was present. The black and the bloody nose. None of that was there to begin with. I added it. Um, I put the mud on the boots. You're spending 20 bucks, which isn't cheap. But in action figure days, it's cheap the way the prices are now. Practice on a McFarlane figure. You're going to really 
have fun when you start to bring your figure to life. And like I said, there's all different skill levels. There's a full customization like Space Ghost. There's just adding mods, they're called. Like I did the Bazooka and Cobra Commander. When you see something with a toy you buy and you don't like it, and you have the tools at home to fix it, it's going to elevate your collection. It's going to elevate the hobby. It's really going to let you... The possibilities are endless. I, I, um, some people, there won't even be a figure made. And with kit bashing, you can make the figure. Uh, for example, this guy, Hardball, isn't out yet. And that's a full custom. So now I have him in my collection. Uh, there's a website called Figure Realm. A lot of tools, a lot of tips. People, you know, you can ask questions. Um, toy collecting is a community. Um, it really is. And if you just seek it out and ask questions, people will lead you away. People like to help other people. It doesn't seem that way on the internet, but there really is some good people out there. And, and I really suggest you get out there and have fun and, and paint, customize, play with your toys, man. Play with them. They're, they, they're meant to be enjoyed, not just sit here on a shelf. Another way to really enjoy your collection, diorama making. I, this is something I just started doing about six months ago. Um, you know, I saw people constantly, especially in the Mezco group, having these great scenes with their figures fighting in alleyways. And I'm more of a fantasy guy, so I wanted to make something for this beautiful Conan figure I got from Mezco. And I just tried it, and I found out that all you need is this stuff called craft foam, which is at... Uh, Lowe's and um, Home Depot for like seven dollars. It's a big. This is broken up. Um, big board, probably the size of this top part of the shelf. Seven bucks. Get yourself some craft foam, uh, a blade, and a ruler. That's all you really needed. And you draw lines, and you paint it, and it comes to life. These little edges that make it look like rocks. This wasn't any, anything fancy other than. I'm going to show you right now. You know how you get this this fancy rock look? You do that. That's all you do. And it, it, it looks like stone automatically. Just from shredding it apart. It's it's magical fun stuff. And you could paint those little parts right here. You know, you could paint this. You dry brush gray and black over it. And you pop it there. It would look like a piece of stone from this um, broken down uh, building structure. Making these has... has made these bookshelves or whatever you want to call it come to life with scenes that didn't look that way prior and, and it was cheap and it was so it's such a fun project if i had if you have a house like a dedicated room where you could do go nuts sky's the limit if you get into diorama making it is fun it is cheap and it really will allow you to have a scene like this that doesn't cost you a lot of money and now I have something that isn't just Conan sitting on his horse. It isn't just Conan standing there. Conan, Conan is alive in my living room. I know this sounds dopey, but when you look at this, this really is like a living little picture here. And, and I love it. I mean, I come back here and I just stare at it and time just goes by. And maybe days go by sometimes, you know. And, and uh, I grew this beard staring at this. I got another one if you come down here this is one when i do my reviews this is where i'm doing them at i know uh you know my reviews aren't as fleshed out like this but this is where i just have fun i talk about my pickups right in this little box here hot glue gun you need hot coming in hot i don't know why i said it like that Coming in hot. get yourself a hot glue gun um some foam i actually have a video somewhere in my log of how i made one of these my log captain's log my backlog oh, shit. um there's a lot of great guys on youtube that show you how to make these i'm telling you youtube is the tool for toy collecting man actually youtube is a great tool for anything i, I learned how to cook on youtube fuck off will you just type it in anything that i'm showing you today type it in there is a youtuber you also got the cream for that rash yes YouTube, yeah. youtube this guy uh uh harry nutballs <laughs> <laughs> if uh yeah <laughs> If you type it and search it, it's there. And these guys, they're dedicated to showing you how to make uh, dioramas. That's where I went. And I'm telling you, I'm a novice at all this stuff. And I'm self-taught. If I can do it, you can do it. Right? Right. So, uh, sometimes a, a toy will come out and it's one of your favorite 
movies and then they make a toy for it. In this case, when NECA announced They Live, I was so excited. I love Roddy Piper. I love John Carpenter. I love They Live. So I really wanted this part of my, this in my collection to kind of shine and have its own spotlight. So that's what I did. The light was like $12 at Ikea. This shelf was like 10 bucks. Um, this poster, I got it off uh, Google Images. I took that image to Office Depot in my local mall and I had them print it and I got this frame at Michael's for like $7 on sale. So now my favorite movie, one of my favorite characters of all time, it has a spot in my collection where it's kind of like its own thing, you know, and I'm really glad I did this. And I think if you have a, a figure in your collection, it could be Batman, the Joker, Goku, I, anything weird you're, you're into, you know, we're all into our, our own thing. Make that figure shine in your collection. Make that be not the focus, but get good lighting for him. Get a little poster behind him. Something that where that figure, you're proud of him. It's your favorite character after all. He should be the, you know, take the spotlight in your collection, so to speak. So that's another tip for um, shelving and displaying your figures. Um, and, and like I said, this these are silly questions. I see people in groups all the time. How do you guys display your figures? And it's, it's, it's not just a no-brainer. Um, I think people assume shelving is, is expensive or hard to do. I mean, this is brick. And I was able to get the, um, the proper drill. You know, it's another thing. These things you're going to want to own, not only for your life, but for your collecting life. Stuff like a drill and um, a Dremel, especially for customizing. I was able to put this freaking shelf in a brick wall. So use what you got. There's ways to do it. It's not that hard. I'm not the most manliest of men. I know it might, you know, come as a shock. Uh -huh. <laughs> like I said, I, I'll, I'm the type of person, if I want something done, I'll look it up, figure out how to do it, and follow those instructions. That's what instructions are, are there for. Um, so, yeah, they live shelving, lighting. My last tip is don't be afraid to sell figures that no longer kind of have a place in your heart and your soul as a collector. When I first started collecting, I really loved 1-6 scale. I thought this was the pinnacle of action figures. If I was going to collect, this is what I needed to have in my collection. As I'm getting a little older and I like to customize more and I like to pose more and take pictures, you really can't do that with these figures. So don't be afraid to sell parts of your collection that no longer are important to you. A lot of, you know, sometimes people get hung up on value and they think that, well, if I sell this figure 10 years from now, it might be worth. 5,000 when it was only 100 when I sold it. You can't live like that. You can't collect like that. Sure, some figures you might want to hold on to, like Jack Nicholson down here. I would never sell because there's not a lot of Jack Nicholson stuff. But Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, although I love them characters, I don't necessarily need horror stuff in my life. So I'm probably going to sell those. And this is how you can keep maintaining a newer collection out with the old and with the new, so to, so to speak. I've learned through, throughout the years that every 10 years, figures change. Things used to have less articula articulation, say, back like 15 years ago. Um, so what you're into, what you want to collect, is probably going to change every few years. So don't be afraid to sell. Don't get so hung up on keeping everything. You're not going to be able to, I'm telling you. Um, even if you have a mansion, you might fill that mansion up with toys. The more space you have, the more stuff you're likely to buy. So don't be afraid to get rid of stuff that um, you're not into as much is what I'm trying to say. So in painting your figures, don't get caught up in buying real expensive paints. I know there'll be customizers out there that swear by Citadel and um, Model Masters and stuff. You could buy um, low-end paints. Acrylic paint, to me, is acrylic paint, especially if I'm not reselling my custom figures. If you're just starting out, go to Michael's and just buy basic paints. They have every color you can imagine from flesh tones for skin to metallics for armor. Um, and my figures tend to look really, really good. Uh, I do get compliments. So I'm not trying to toot my own horn. But what I'm trying to say is don't get stressed out and overpaying for paint. You're just starting. Just go with the basic stuff. What do you think, Nasty? Cover everything? Yeah, I think I did too. So, what did we talk about? 
Here's how to flush out your collection and enjoy it more. Shelving, lighting, customizing, even if it's in its most basic form, you know, modding, just adding stuff to the figure. It doesn't have to be the craziest thing. Get into making dioramas. Don't be afraid to sell. Was that five things or four things? What was it, Asti? Anyway, any questions and anything I talked about, feel free to ask me. I'm available all day, any day. Um, look up Cosplay Chris, Ink Drop Customs. Man, I forget the guy that does the uh, dioramas. I will have that in, in the description. He's a great guy for diorama building. And just have fun. Don't get stressed out. Open your toys. Enjoy them. I know some of you guys are inbox collectors. We'll talk about it another time. That'll be another big video. Thanks for watching. And until uh, next time.